Welcome to the latest episode of Mob Talk Sit Down. I'm Dave Schratweiser. And I'm George Anastasia. George, a big break for Joey Merlino, right. a big birthday for retiring mob boss Joe Legambi, and a big subpoena for a Philly wise guy. Yeah, the end of the summer, things might be heating up a little bit. George, let's get right to it. Mob boss Joey Merlino got notified this week that he's getting a big break on his prison sentence. Could be out in a halfway house by October. Yeah, you know, it makes it look like Joey was smart at taking that plea deal. You know, the, the, the opposite side of that was go to trial and maybe get a long prison sentence. Took the two years, and now he's chipping away at that. He's getting this break, and he's still fighting that, that four months he put in for that parole violation in the past that he may get credit for. I mean, he may, may be out even sooner than that. If that right. And this is the new justice reform right. formula to uh, move people out of the federal prisons who are not violent offenders, uh, involved in drugs, things like that. This clearly is a minor gambling charge that he pled to. So he gets a pretty good break yeah. here. And if you ask Joey, he would say, I'm not a violent offender. Other people might argue with that, but that's uh, that's only Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah. uh, if you want to bring up past stuff, he hasn't right. been convicted of any murders or any serious violent crimes that I'm aware of. No, but George were never convicted of those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. Now, he was supposed to get out in July of 2020. He'll be getting out in October, going to a halfway house. Doesn't mean he's completely out, but uh, freedom nonetheless. Yeah, and as I said, if he gets those four months credit, he gets out even sooner. So yeah, he's got a lot going for him right now. I think he's going to be home a lot sooner than anybody expected. Somebody speculated that the decision on that appeal of his to reduce it by four months will probably come the day before he goes to the halfway house. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that nice little twist. You know what I'm saying? So yes. we'll, we'll see what happens with right. that. Let's uh, transition to... Uh, Anthony Persiano. This is a guy, uh, former mob soldier, correct? Yeah. Made guy, um, who, for all intents and purposes, has entered into a plea agreement with the federal government over in New Jersey, in Camden. And uh, interesting background here. Yeah, I mean, Persiano is the guy who's suspected of being involved in that drug case where uh, Sal Piccolo, Servidio, and those other guys got indicted, the big bust over in New Jersey about a year and a half ago. He was the guy who was wearing a wire, and he was the guy who introduced an FBI, FBI undercover into that investigation. His plea has nothing to do with that. His plea has to do with the uh, insurance fraud involving a, a jewelry store robbery up right. in North Jersey and mail fraud involving a, a restoration company he was running. And he's pled out to those, and he's going to be sentenced, I think, in December. Right. Looking at a maximum of 20, but he probably won't get it. What's not in the documents, but what we're hearing about is the extent of his cooperation. That'll probably come out if and when he's sentenced. The other fascinating thing with all of this, if you look at the timing of all of this, Persiano's doing this. Persiano surfaces in 2015, 2010, with first plus. The case that Scarfo Jr., Nicky Scarfo Jr., and Sal Palillo were involved in that, that multi-million dollar fraud case. Sure. He's doing this restoration work for a company associated with First Plus. Scarfo and Palillo go on trial. While they're on trial, Persiano, according to the documents we've seen, is still doing the same thing with this Code Red Fire mm. company out of Glassboro, New Jersey, and Pensacola, doing the exact same things that he was doing the penalty with First Plus. He's never charged in the First Plus case, mm. and now he's charged with basically you got a problem in your house, restoration, you had fire, water damage, I'm going to come in and Some fix it for you. Hurricane Sandy stuff right. in there. Let's put the insurance claim in, I'll take care of it. Put the insurance claim in, he takes the money, does half the work, none of the work, and you get defrauded. And the That's insurance fraud thing up in North Jersey is very interesting with the pawn shop. Yeah. Right? They, the robbery. They, they, they do a robbery, masks and all, right? right. Come out, the guy claims $175,000 right. was taken. The feds say otherwise. Yeah, I mean, and that was apparently to settle some kind of debt. It was all arranged, prearranged. The robbery was a false robbery in order to uh, put in this insurance claim. So Persiano clearly is a, a mover and a shaker and operator, kind of a con man. And guys on the street talk about that. At the same time, and we keep coming back to this with this Philadelphia mob. Yeah. Everybody knows who Persiano was. Everybody knows what Persiano's about, yet they were still talking to him. Yeah. And he's wired up, and some guys got... I heard about a meeting in Atlantic City in a hotel room where he's wearing a wire with some significant people in the room and an FBI agent along with him, and that turns into a complicated conversation, which I think gets resolved with nobody saying anything too incriminating from what I've been told. But they don't like this guy one bit. We've been getting dirt dished to us for a year on the guy. Yeah, and, and one of the stipulations that sentencing is he's going to be sentenced for these. He pled guilty to an information. Any victim who believes they were defrauded can come forward at that sentencing and lay out additional information about him. 
So, and the other thing that's interesting is in the, the plea deal, it has nothing, it said it doesn't apply to any other jurisdiction. So a lot of people are waiting to see if there's another shoe going to drop here in Philadelphia yeah. in the Eastern District. Yeah. I don't know if that'll happen or not. I, I think the other thing that's interesting is I don't think the feds can use Persiano as a witness, I, given I, his background. I think lawyers have been told this guy will never appear in a courtroom right. because we had an FBI agent with him, and that agent would be in there rather than Persiano. Let's talk about some victims real quick on yes. this. There were some victims here who tell us and have filed lawsuits that they gave money to Anthony Persiano for his company to be partners or minority partners in his company, and they got ripped off. That's their allegation in court papers. This hasn't ended. In yeah, no, situation. no. I mean, if you look at it, it looks like he's playing both ends. He's getting investors invested in my company. I got this good thing going, and then he's got people who need restoration work. They're giving him their insurance claim money, and he's not doing the work. So yeah, you know, Persiano emerges as a real street hustler. Yeah. And the irony is, he may be able to walk away from some of this because he cooperated. Right. And that's one of the things that always annoys the guys downtown. And final note on this: he's kind of packed up his tent here in South Jersey, down the shore, and gone somewhere but he's no longer around. Yeah, I think he's played out. I mean, yeah. I, I think the, the word has gotten around on, in all different levels and all kind of uh, places that you don't deal with this guy. So that's what's happening with him. All right, for all you sit-down fanatics, we're sitting down here in this there park. Uh, we're not playing a little chess, but we're gonna talk about a, maybe a chess game that's going on here. Uh, mob captain, Marty Angelina, uh, confirmed by his attorney, received a subpoena from a state grand jury meeting in Norristown, Pennsylvania, just outside Philadelphia. They want to talk to him about a shooting 27 years ago. Yeah. Marty was the victim in that shooting. Yes, he was. And I, I'd be very surprised if he says anything about it. The interesting thing about that is, why are they looking at a shooting that goes back to 27 years? That statute of limitations has run on that, that particular act. The only thing that is, doesn't have a statute of limitations is murder. So is this somehow connected to a murder investigation that goes back 27, 28 years? Like an entree, maybe a way to get into that, maybe thinking that he might have some valuable information yeah, or is about it, that. Not it, that he's involved, not no, that he's involved, I mean, but he, he might know something. He's clearly a victim of, of an assault. And I think one of the questions that, that we don't know enough about this to, to really disclose, I mean, I, I think law enforcement has got an idea where they want to go. And was that assault connected to a murder that occurred back then. We don't know the answer to that. But that would be the only thing that would make sense. All right. His lawyer says, Jack McMahon, by the way, very good defense attorney, who was Marty's lawyer before, uh, has told me that this uh, he's gotten a subpoena. Right. He will do his best to comply with, I don't know if it's appearing or whatever might occur. Uh, that's going to put him in a little tricky spot, whether he should take the fifth, answer any questions. All those things have to be decided by uh, Mr. Angelina and Jack McMahon, but um, he doesn't really know what this is about, and I think that's part of the problem. You're going to walk into a situation where you don't know what they might ask you. Well, yeah, I mean, on the reverse side, I think you want to go in to find out what it is they're curious about, yeah. to give you an idea where they're going with all of this. And you got to remember, we're talking back about 92. Yeah. I mean, this is an era when Marty is part of the Young Turks back then, with yeah. Joey and those guys. I mean, yeah. They got they got their own kind of organization that's evolving and developing so yeah. yeah I mean there was a lot going on back then how does this connect to any of that we don't know the answer to that I think part of the, the questioning in the grand jury might give Marty and his lawyer an indication of where they're trying to go yeah. and maybe something will come out of that but right now it's just uh, all right there's, an, there's another little detail in there the wife of a Philly mob captain uh, back in that day uh, actually drove Marty to the hospital uh, to get treatment it was a leg wound right shot in the leg and initially was served with a subpoena and now that seems to have been backed off at this point so i don't believe that she will appear we're not going to get into names at this point or right. anything like that but clearly they're digging into this yeah i mean i think the, the nature of the shooting why was he shot what was that, that about was it some kind of underworld dispute whatever that was that's that i think is just a stepping stone to a bigger story uh, and a bigger case whether they get there again is uh, it's problematic going back that far is difficult George, big birthday coming up this month. Uh, Joe Legambi, the uncle, turns 80. Rumors are he's retiring. Um, he's had a significant run here in the last 20 years. Yeah, I mean, say what you will about Joe Legambi. When he was in charge of the family, he really took it back into the shadows. Uh, he was old school, and I think that's what was needed back then in terms of the organization. You know, it had been a little bit volatile. 
Uh, there's a couple unsolved murders that occurred on his watch that I know the feds would still like to get into. He was tried on in, in a, a federal in, uh, indictment in Philadelphia, beat the case, walked away from that case. So you know he he's got and he, you know he's got longevity. He he got he got over on the old Frankie Flowers murder, walked away from that. So the guy's a survivor and 80 years old. I mean, uh, you know I think I guess he deserves to just walk into the sunset. Guy said to me this week that uh, he thought Angelo Bruno and Joe Legambi were the two most steadying influences at mob bosses here in Philadelphia. I think that's correct. If you look at it, if you look at, they were bookends to whenever where you, where you had Scarpo, you had Stanford, you had Ralph Natale, you had a lot of craziness. So yeah, I mean, I think in a lot of ways, Joe Legambi took the family back to where it was in the Bruno era. And you know, pe a lot of people make light of Legambi, he was a bartender. I think he's smarter than a lot of people give yeah. him credit for. Yeah, I'm also hearing that uh, of late, his role has kind of been consigliere that he's settling disputes, he's settling arguments, well, you, uh, know, you know, things like that. That would make sense. I mean, is it, and that's the way it used to be in the, in the old days. The older guys who have been around who have experienced a lot of stuff, you go to them for counsel, yeah. and, they, and they try to steer you in the right direction. They, they have, I think the problem with this organization, and we've talked about it many times already, is it's ne never going to be what it used to be. It's a lot smaller. There's not a lot of activity out there. There's not a lot of money to be made. Yeah. So where does it all go? And one of the things that uh, in recent years is they don't go back at anybody if there's a problem physically. There's no violence. There hasn't been any violence. Well, there's been a murder in the last 10 years or so. But they're not going out, whacking people, yeah. beating people up. You know, their reputation is being talked about in federal court, but actual acts are not. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, and again, it goes back to kind of the Bruno era. With, with Bruno, the, a murder was the negotiating tool of last resort. If everything else failed, maybe mm. somebody gets whacked. Scarfo, that era, murder was a calling card. I think Legambi is going back to that low key, stay in the shadows. This is about making money, not making headlines. Don't call attention to ourselves. And I think that's what he did for this organization. He, he brought stability at a time when it was very unstable. Murders bring heat, no doubt about that. Absolutely. And, and, you know, and big jail might. sentences if you get convicted. And they still mad because they yeah. sit out there. There's those three murders that the Mortorano hit, Johnny Casasano hit, Ronnie Kirchner hit. They all sit out there. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. And those were on his watch. Nobody's been charged. He hasn't been charged. Uh, there hasn't been any even hint yeah. that somebody's close to that at this point. Yeah. We'll see what the feds do. I mean, I know they're always looking at it, but can they get there? I don't know. All right, George, that's a wrap for this week. But close it with Joey Merlino. When's he hit the jailhouse gate? I mean, it, it, conceivably in January, February of next year, and he's back on the beach in Florida. I don't think he's coming back here. All right, he'll be in that halfway house, we're told, in Florida in October sometime. So uh, interesting fall coming up. Yeah, and I think he stays in Florida. Uh, we'll see you next time.